Welcome to the second episode of What's It All About. Um, my name's Matt Lewis, I'm here with Leah Turner, LinkedIn Hi. coach extraordinaire. Hi, thank you um, for having me. Thank you, thank you for doing it, I appreciate it. Um, so Leah, I imagine most people will know you anyway, but for those that don't, can you um, tell us a bit about yourself, what's your story? So I am guess I'm most well known on LinkedIn for training other people how to use LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, but unlike, oh, it sounds like I'm going to throw people under the bus here. Do it, um, do it. <laughs> That's unlike, what we're here for, controversy. Uh, unlike a lot of people who are considered LinkedIn coaches or push their, their credibility as LinkedIn coaches, I had success in generating lots of leads for my own business before I ventured into teaching other people how to do it. So everything that I was doing was based on actual experience and actual successful yeah. techniques that I'd use. Um, and so I was implementing it, it like that, but... Um, I guess the biggest difference was I was doing it while having a rather unique appearance for LinkedIn um, and a an unusual voice because I was quite like, I'm just me and yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to please anyone. So I guess that's kind of, um, I, I, I became quite popular on there during the pandemic when people were looking for sort of online entertainment, water cooler chats, yeah. adult conversations. So it all kind of um, exploded during COVID and now I've got a very sustainable reasonably successful business doing it and my I've got other businesses that I'm developing as well so that's kind of the story with LinkedIn yeah. um and personally I'm a lone parent to my six-year-old son I've got a couple of dogs and I've just moved up to Manchester where I've bought a house which is um as a result of my business flourishing on LinkedIn so yeah that's the sort of personal side of things very so when I first came across you as I've been a couple of years ago I think you had a tra- Transcription business? Yeah. What was that? Yeah, I had a company called Stereotype. Yeah. Very clever name. I like it. Take full credit for that one. Um, so I, I ran that for, so I was 26 when I started that business. Yeah. And I started it as a side hustle from the job I was currently doing to make some money to travel. And then uh, went really well, left my job um, and did it full time. It never made a lot of money, but it was like a lifestyle business. It was yeah. enough. It was enough to get by as long as I was careful. Yeah. And it funded me traveling. Um. And then I had my little boy and I sort of was a bit trapped at that point because I was in the benefits trap. As a self-employed person working from home, I got enough government yeah, help yeah, yeah. to support me that allowed me to help like send my uh, son to nursery and all yeah. of that. But if I'd gone and got a full-time job, um, I wouldn't have been paid enough or I'd have been paid too much to get benefits, yeah. but not enough to afford childcare. So I would have been in a, because I didn't really have any marketable, well, I didn't have any skills right. that I could get for, yeah. with a job or that, not that I knew of. Um, and so when COVID hit, unfortunately, my business took a massive hit because although I was getting lots of leads from LinkedIn, all of the clients I was working with were like building surveyors and doctors and none of them could see their clients. Yeah. Um, and with the rise in sort of technology like Otter AI and Dragon Dictation and all of that, I was like, "Mm, this might be a good time to kind of explore other avenues because human transcribe, there's probably only have another five years, if that, where they're yeah. actually needed because AI, AI is getting so good. Um, so that's when I started looking at LinkedIn coaching and I didn't for a second think anyone would really be interested in someone who'd only been doing it for six months, who'd only been using LinkedIn for six months, but I was quite quite wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did quite well. It's, it, it's good. It's been, it's been quite interesting following your journey a bit, really. Yeah. See, I love LinkedIn. Yeah, um, me too. I, I built my business off LinkedIn. Mm. You know, so... Like we went from, and my business only gone four years. And wow. We kind of went from zero to three hundred k a year just using LinkedIn. Yeah. No sales team, just me posting shit every day, basically. And Being it's, in the it, right place at the right time for the right people to see. It's you. it's funny enough. Uh, yeah, I find I find LinkedIn hilarious. And you can't take it too seriously. You can't. I did um, I did a post on LinkedIn. It was me singing karaoke, Ice Ice Baby without looking at the words once. It was incredible. <laughs> and I got, I got two messages in the space of two minutes. And someone messaged me and said, just some professional advice for you. If you ever want to be taken seriously and you ever want to make money <laughs> on this platform, yeah, leave things like that for Facebook. And literally a minute later, someone else messaged me and said, Mike, I love the video. I've been meaning to chat to you for a while. Can you have a look at our SEO? Did you screenshot that message to the other person? Yeah. That guy Absolutely. became a five thousand pound a month client oh. off the back of me singing karaoke. I, I I posted a picture of my my dog when I got my 
puppy. Yeah. I posted a picture of him with just like a little caption about it and said, show me your puppies. I had 400 people comment with pictures of their dogs. Yeah. And I can attribute directly over £4,000 worth of work to that single post, which had led to them yeah. reaching out to message me because they had like a spaniel as well, or they just got a puppy and it created a conversation. It was just an icebreaker. Yeah. And that happens to me all the time. And, you know, I, I will chuck out a post. I chucked out a post last night and there's 15 leads in my inbox yeah. right now. If I if they all book, I'm booked up for the rest of the summer. And you're like, this is... And it's so easy. When yeah, you're yeah. doing it right, It uh, the biggest thing that people f- really fall down is they'll do it for like a month consistently and then they'll go, it's not working. Yeah. And it's like, you no, know, it takes more than that. You have to keep showing up. And my clients that do keep showing up you know, they'll do it consistently for three months and then that's it. The compounded interest just starts working and they get lead after lead after lead. And I've got countless examples yeah. of people that have done exactly that. But if you've got a really high ticket or niche offering, you're not going to get as many leads, yeah. especially not straight away. But once you build you up that trust need, and they start seeing results. Leads, exactly. You've got a really high and, ticket. And that's, that's sort of where I've moved to and yeah. I'm turning away clients more or redirecting them to other products or referring them to other people because yeah, yeah. I don't have... I was the whole feast or family. Like, I'll take on anything because I really want to make the money. And then I went, no, but this is ruining my quality of life. So yeah. why am I charging this money and earning so much if I can't actually enjoy like take a step back and, and yeah, yeah. actually enjoy the fruits of my labor so now I do less coaching but more sort of intensive um, and a lot higher priced and it and it is better and I'm, I'm moving even more towards that model and doing even less coaching but bigger projects with people so Amazing. yeah I love yeah. it so what so take it back a bit. My, what first brought you onto LinkedIn? Because you're right, you're not the typical LinkedIn person. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I speak a lot about whenever I'm talking about LinkedIn. I say just just, just don't be a dickhead in the suit because that is 99 percent yeah. of LinkedIn is. Yeah, and they're not meaning to be dickheads. Probably most of them. Um, but that's what people's perception is of LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely. Why would I, be there? I call them corporate Collins. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> corporate Collins. Corporate perfect. Collins. Um, so I wanted so my son was about to start school so it was around like September October 2019 and my son was supposed to start school the next September and I started thinking this transcription business like I'm working all hours yeah like I worked full time with him from the from him being two weeks old yeah like literally not I didn't stop um and I thought well when he starts school I'd like to just work nine till three yeah so I'm only working the school hours but I need to still earn the same amount of money so I thought oh okay why don't I see if I can get some more clients and take some people on freelance yeah. where I'm taking a cut of, of what they do because my reputation is now good with what I'm doing. Um, and that's why I originally went onto LinkedIn was to find some more clients. But I got those emails. You know, you get those, this many people have looked at your profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went, oh, I hmm, haven't thought of LinkedIn before. Yeah. So I, like, like everyone, had a LinkedIn profile, was connected to a few hundred people that yeah. I like, went to school with, used to yeah. work with, but never actually logged in and looked at it. Yeah. Um, and I logged on and went, absolutely not. I'm not doing this. And I like scrolling the down my feed thinking, God, this is dull. This is not me at all. Um, and I did the same thing a week or so later when I got another email. And I saw a few fun posts. And I was like, okay, hold on. Maybe, maybe this could be something. Yeah. But I still just had a logo for my photo. Like I was like, no one is going to take me yeah. serious. Bright blonde hair, single mum, least corporate looking woman you've ever seen. Um and I braved it and put my profile picture up and was like, oh God, they're going to like run me out of the corporate yeah. village. Um, and they didn't. And it was all right. And then I was trying to post like, not corporate stuff, but stuff that I thought people wanted to hear. Yeah. What I thought was what people on LinkedIn were looking for. Um, and it completely flatlined. Like yeah. I got no interaction at all. And then I just did what I always do and went, fuck it, what have I got to lose? Yeah. And was myself and put out, now, there was a funny post. I was doing some transcription work for uh, some people that did interviews with cow farmers. They were doing research and they were talking about artificial cow insemination, which is the weirdest, yeah. weirdest thing to be uh, typing about. And I was, I sort of made a funny observation about the strange jobs that I got and it got loads of interaction. Yeah. And um, I talked about like an embarrassing moment where I'd got out of the car in the morning um, and, and got my son out of his car seat and turned around and headbutted a pipe, like a lamppost. Yeah. 
And then it, it exploded. Like the way I'd phrased it, I think just made people laugh and it yeah. exploded and went really big. And then I did a, another one. I was like, I can't believe that my post about a post about a post uh, like hit so many people. Yeah. Um, and it just kept growing and growing. And I had like 10,000 followers within the first two months. But weirdly enough, I didn't know that that was unusual because I wasn't looking at numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that for me, I was seeing interaction on my post and having fun conversations and actually enjoying being on LinkedIn. And I didn't notice the numbers until someone else went, this is like really unusual. You've yeah. grown really fast. And I was like, oh, am I? That's weird. Because I was looking at how many connections I was getting, but I was also getting a lot of followers. Right. Um, and then it just kept going and going. And at that point I was like, okay, like there's something in this. I'm quite good at this. Yeah. And I'm getting a lot of leads and a lot of clients from this just from having my headline right and posting relatable content. And um, yeah, then when I actually started LinkedIn training and sharing what I knew and really supporting the community and using my platform to lift other people that were around me, it it just went crazy. Like everything just went mad. And, you know, now I'm, I think I'm... Uh, getting close to 150,000 followers now Mental. without every and the thing is there's, there's lots of people that have that number of followers but the vast majority of them have used like engagement hacks yeah, and growth yeah, hacks course, yeah. engagement pods all of that and that I'd never wanted to do that because I only I wasn't interested in having big numbers I was have interested in having engaged people a, engaged people that were useful to me that I could offer something to them yeah I I've never been about having just a, a huge following it gives me crippling anxiety when I actually think about how many people see what I say on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, Jesus Christ, people every now and then recognize me in the street. And I'm actually surprisingly introverted, especially when I'm with my son. I'm like, I don't really yeah, want yeah, yeah. to have that. It makes me uncomfortable. And um, people, I think, assume differently. But it's been the most fun two years. and Life changing? Completely life changing. Life -changing. Like, I was on a low income in a rental property and I'd been shifted from property to property to property because of bad landlords and I had a slug infestation in one house and a broken boiler the landlady wouldn't fit when I had a newborn baby. Like, it was shit. Yeah. It was, I mean, I was happy, but I was happy because I had my son yeah, and course, we had yeah, yeah. just enough to survive and I didn't really want for much. And now I've just bought a four-bedroom house and I'm close to my family and my son's at private school and I've been able to provide a life I never in a million years imagined on my own I would be able to provide from. And it is all because of LinkedIn. Like if I hadn't logged right. on, that this would not be happening, which is crazy. How big a jump was it to go from your transcription business into mm. LinkedIn? Because I, into LinkedIn coaching, because I, um, I was on LinkedIn, I talk a lot about SEO, and people kind of recommend me for it all the time, and, yeah. it, and it, it's really, it's really good. You've tagged me in posts before, you know. I think that's the power of LinkedIn, right? Yeah, someone, you're someone creating who, micro yeah. adverts, they become your like yeah. little advocates. Don't they? I've never done SEO for you, really. You've got no idea if I'm any good or not. Yeah. <laughs> but but you've seen me there. You've seen me post content. You've seen with people. You've I've seen me post reputation. testimonials. You've yeah. heard reputation. So you become a salesperson, and I yeah. think that's like incredible. Um, I dabbled a bit with LinkedIn coaching. Did had, you? Well, sort not. I had people ask me, yeah, people who I knew, and I, I, well, I went away and I looked at. I developed a bit of a strategy for what for what I did, mm. in, because because my background really was telesales. I right. did sales for marketing companies. Yeah. Now, when you do sales and marketing, you end up you learn the marketing. You have to yeah. in order to sell it. And I was and I was thirty four, thirty three, thirty four. I, thought, I can't be doing telesales for the rest of my life no, I need no. to find it. and generating inquiries so much easier to convert yeah um so I went on LinkedIn I started posting oh, you know we'll give you a free SEO audit we'll do you a review call me for it was just shit really um I suddenly get 79 views and all that and then we had an apprentice we've still got him now who had a date and we said oh what sh what should Mitchell cook for his date and it got 150 comments got 5,000 <laughs> views and it got and we kind of saw, well, okay, people clearly want the more personal stuff. So we started talking more personal stuff, but we weren't getting any leads. Mm. So I think it's easy to get engagement on LinkedIn. You put a thing on LinkedIn, do you have tomato sauce or brown sauce? Oh, yeah. Painful. Yeah. But it gets loads of likes, gets loads of comments, because 
which increases people, your visibility. Yeah, but it doesn't get you any leads. So I developed a bit of a strategy. You had to post certain things at certain times. So I showed some people what I did, um, but I never wanted, because I was the, my money comes from SEO, mm. I didn't want on LinkedIn for me to be to not be the SEO guy. Yeah. And like you were saying, there's that cliche there's something as well on LinkedIn to become a LinkedIn coach. I like your headline is LinkedIn coach. Yes, another one. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I, even, I love that kind of playing into it. It but, works very well. Yeah, it, of course, because people, yeah, it just, it confronts it head on, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, were you concerned, my concern would be, if I start talking about that, I'd lose SEO inquiries. Were you concerned about possibly yeah. losing that income? In I was that I was a little bit, but at the time when I decided to try LinkedIn coaching, um, I didn't really have much of a choice because yeah. COVID had hit. And the so because of LinkedIn, I had a team of five ladies transcribing for me, but they right. all had their kids at home so they couldn't work. Yeah. And the work wasn't there anyway. Right. So I had just enough to keep me not twiddling right. my thumbs. But the money was not enough um, and I obviously have my son at home and I, it was very hard to do any transcription when you've got a four year old that needs your mummy all the time. And then by the end of the day, transcription requires a lot of concentration and long periods of real focus. And when I'm tired, I can't, I yeah, just yeah. can't do that. Um, especially if it's something that I'm not interested in. So I was having these full days with my son at home with no childcare, no support, no family to help me, like literally nothing. Um, and we couldn't like go out and do anything and he was bored all the time. So I was knackered by the end of the day and then I was trying to do this transcription yeah. to make ends meet. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Um, and I was getting asked, well, like you were, I was getting asked all the time, how did you do this? How did you do this? And then I had a phone call with another transcriber um, who'd paid a lot of money to do a training with a well-known LinkedIn coach. And it was a big, big investment that she'd paid. Um, and she... In my head, I sort of go, who, who was it? Well, no, I don't, I don't it. <laughs> but the results, she wasn't happy with the training that yeah. she'd had. She was actually quite upset and distressed. And I right. didn't know the woman very well. And she'd actually mm. um, tried to steal some of my customers. And I was like... And she was like messaging people that had commented on my content. She'd emailed me asking for my rates for transcription and then posted undercutting my rates. That's and I, I confronted her straight away. And Business I said, is mental, like, isn't it? <laughs> I, I confronted her straight away and I said, look, if you'd have actually just asked me outright, how did I price my stuff? Yeah. And been honest, instead of making up a fake inquiry, because I'd gone and just looked up her name on LinkedIn and seen yeah, what yeah, she'd yeah. done. And I was like, what you've done was really, really underhand and unnecessary. If you just asked me, I would have told you and I would have probably given you some help and probably referred work to you because I couldn't do it all yeah. at some points. So I ended up having a conversation with her um, and it went on for an hour because she's a, she was a mum with a young son and my heartstrings were tugged a little bit. I was like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to see her fail. I'm not going to take this personally. I, I will have a conversation with her. Um, and she came away from that conversation. She started using LinkedIn, how I use LinkedIn and she had success straight away. And she said to me, I paid over £2,000 for that coaching that I had. And I got more in that hour with you than I had in that entire like 12 weeks of training. Oh. And I was like, something to I've this. got something here. Yeah, yeah. There's something that I can do that is different from how other people are doing it. Because when I'm training LinkedIn, I'm, I'm looking at the person and I'm not necessarily it's not just about what they do, but I want to know about who they are, what drives them, um, what quirks they have, what things that they do that are interesting, what's been interesting parts of their journey. And I get them to start sharing a little bit about that as well, because it gives it gives people a why to connect to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I was digging into, rather than saying, this is what you need to do, follow these instructions, post this many times a day, post about this, yeah. this and this. Um, and I said, no, you need to work out what it is about you that other people are going to find interesting. Because yeah. when they connect with your story, they're more likely to remember you and be invested in your success. Yeah. And so we fo focus much more on the people. And that feels much more comfortable to people. And I'm actually saying to them, you're interesting. And there are things about your journey that are really relatable. And if we pick on those, as well as add in testimonials and social proof and expertise, yeah. those things are what connect people. Whereas a lot of the training that I had been aware of was very strategic, very data driven, very analytical. And that's not how you work. That's how you work. That's yeah. how you get the leads that you need for your websites. It's all based on data, but people are different. We're emotional. 
and you have to connect with this on an emotional level. Yeah. So I was connecting those dots for people and going, yeah, but why are they just going to want to work with you for just constantly posting job ads? If I wanted to look at job ads, I'd open the yellow pages. Yeah. Um, they want to know about you. So tell them about your son. Tell them about the things that have been a struggle. Tell them what you've overcome. Talk about a job and how, you know, working with this client enabled you to do this thing yeah. with your son. People want to see that. And it totally changed the game for her. And then I started doing the sort of £99 an hour and, and it just went from there. And then I was in demand, so I increased my rates and I got shouted at by a couple of other female business owners that went, you're not charging enough. Um, so yeah, it just, it completely spiralled. And it was, I, I just had to. And I was never worried about losing the transcription thing because I ended up hiring a PA that was basically running that. So when it picked back up, when yeah. people started going back out, she was running it. Um, and it was, uh, I guess, 16 months ago, I just jacked it in. I had a customer that came um, to me with something that they wanted done last minute. And the lady that was doing all the work was off poorly. Um, and I went, why am I doing this? Like, I just made 20 grand in the last however many months um, doing LinkedIn coaching. Why the hell am I stressing on a weekend about yeah. getting something done that's 100 quid of work? Like, what am I doing? And I literally, that, Two minutes later, wrote an email, sent it around to all my clients and said, effective immediately, we're no longer transcribing and referred all my business to somebody else that I knew. And that was it. I just made that instant decision. And I knew it was... back from that? No, no, not at all. They were gutted to see me go because I'd been um, like integral to some of their businesses. Yeah. But they were all aware of what was going on with my other business because I've been transparent about it and said, you know, there'll be other people um, covering some of your work now, but they're really high high um, level work yeah. I, I wouldn't have them working for me if I didn't trust them yeah. and I'd been with a lot of these clients for 8 or 9 years so um, yeah I, I wasn't worried and I still get inquiries about transcription now even though it's been 2 years since yeah. I did any yeah um, no I was never I was never worried I saw it as a potential opportunity to do something different because transcription was soul destroying like I'm a creative person and I never got to be creative with transcription. I was listening to other people's words and I loved to write. And I, I, if it wasn't for how creative I can be on LinkedIn, it probably wouldn't interest me as much. But the fact that I can create something and immediately just from writing something or a funny picture or a video, I get immediate feedback. I'm like, this, this is fun. This is yeah. fun for me. Yeah. I think it's, it's that approach, isn't it? Of If you can get people to buy into you, it just, it matters so much. You yeah. know, it's like, all the people, I never spend the money with people I don't like. No, same. Ever. No. I mean, I, literally, I went to buy a car yesterday and the salesman said something to me and I was like, I, 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 I looked at my wife and I was like, yeah, not yet. I don't want to get it, my it, commission. And I, I really wanted that car and, and I was just, no, nah, no, nah, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And it's, but I think once you bought into the person, so I, I was saying to Mike earlier, um, he was like, oh, have you met Leah before? And I was like, no, no. I feel like I know her though. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like there's loads of people on LinkedIn. I, I'm terrible if I refer to everyone as my mate. And yeah. I'm like, I was like, I've got a mate on LinkedIn. It was just start, it was just start the coaching. I've got, uh, like, because I just. You feel like you know them. I feel like I, feel like yeah. I know people. And when you have that, the power of that. Mm. We, the, the first bit of LinkedIn training I did, um, someone rang me and said, Mike, I need to speak to you. I know that I don't need any SEO, but I just feel like I need to spend some money with you. <laughs> what can you do? And I was like, we do SEO. He's like, yeah, yeah, but I've been following you on LinkedIn and I trust you. I like what you have to say. I feel like I need to work with you. Yeah. I was like, I'll show you what I do on LinkedIn. He's like, yeah, cool, great. I was like, all right. It's mad, isn't it? So we had, we had a one, one, one hour long call once a week for four weeks. I've had... And I'll talk you through my system. I've had similar. Like, I've had people who I've done LinkedIn training with and they've enjoyed the conversations so much and the way they felt after the conversations that they've come back and they said, I want to do weekly mentoring with you. Yeah. And these are like, I had a guy who's like a really high level recruiter, um, headhunter in New York in a huge company in New York. And I was like, what does he think he's learning off me? Like, I don't know anything. I'm just yeah. muddling my way through life. I've had these like multi-millionaire, super successful people. And they come to me and they're just like, I just want to pay you to, to talk to me once a week. Yeah. Because I feel so good after speaking to you and you, you're very direct with your questioning, but you're friendly with it. And you make me take a different angle on, on things. Yeah. And I'm like, 
that's not what I do. And I've said no to doing it because it's not in alignment with what I'm trying to achieve and it's just distracting me from my goals. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like a fraud because I'm in no way trained to be any kind of a, a, a life coach or a business mentor. I've never really experienced the business world. This is my first real taste of, yeah. of the, I've only ever worked in small companies prior to um, starting my own businesses. So, but I get that. And I get people that are just like, I'm just looking for an opportunity to spend money with you. And Imagine. that's why, that's exactly why when last, was it last month or the month before, when the whole war in Ukraine kicked off, yeah. I, I I saw something awful on the TV and I just couldn't sleep that night. I had all these nightmares about it happening to, to me with my little boy and it just really, really um, affected me that first night. And I felt really panicked and I woke up and I went, what can I do? And I knew that I have that power to make people want to spend money and support what I support because if I'm emotionally invested in something, if I want to do something good, I know that if I offer them something that they're not going to normally be able to afford yeah, from yeah. me that they can write off as a business expense at a, an, an amount that everybody can spare 30 quid. You'll yeah. spend 30 quid in the pub on a Friday night, if not more. So I was like, 30 quid, get a couple of my LinkedIn buddies to do it as well that never normally do these masterclasses or webinars. Let's just grab them. And they all volunteered their time and 40 grand later in a week. Like, Amazing. But that was knowing that I had the power to do that and yeah. that I could leverage the platform. I'll be completely honest. I didn't for a second imagine it would get, I was hoping for five grand. Yeah. Um, but we sold 950 tickets to the webinar. We've sold another 200 of the webinar copies since then. I think it might be even more by now. Um, and then there were direct donations as well that happened directly to the cause because we'd created so much publicity for it. So Incredible. they, yeah, I mean, I think eventually it was 40 grand from the webinar. I think eventually they also got a direct donation of over 50 grand from from a company yeah. as a corporate sponsor. And there was 25 grand of like food and water donated and transport donated. So it's, it was massive, the impact that that had. And that was like you say, from recognizing that I could get people yeah. to spend a, a reasonable amount of money, even if they didn't really feel like they needed LinkedIn coaching yeah. because because of the, the sort of reputation I'd established. So if you've got a platform, use it. Use it for good, eh? Yeah, exactly. I know it sounds well cheesy. It is and cheesy, I, but... It is really cheesy, it's 40, but... 40 grand, a lot of people need it, isn't it? For me, I... And this probably... It, I don't know if anyone would even believe me when I say this, but if it wasn't for the good stuff that I can use the platform for, yeah. the money wouldn't be enough for right. me to do it. Okay. Because I don't really enjoy the spotlight. Yeah. I know how to work the spotlight, but in my personal life, I'm very much like... I like to keep myself to myself. I'm yeah, not yeah. really a, you know, I've never wanted to be like famous on Instagram yeah. or, so I have to push myself to do those things. I have to push myself to go on video. I don't like recording videos. So if it wasn't for the positive outcomes. You've been doing more videos influence. lately, haven't you? Yeah, yeah I have nice. because I've been really pushing my Instagram. Yeah. Okay. So I've been getting on video more, but I still, I'm like, oh, I hate it. And I just feel awkward and you know, I have to have a glass of wine before I do it <laughs> to relax me because I just feel like a rabbit in headlights most of the time. <laughs> do you ever wake up and go, what am I going to post? Ever? No. Never? No. And that's just because... You've got your content prompts, but you've just always got a story. I you've always got something to There's to always say. There's always something. You know, on a day where I'm uninspired, inevitably something will drop into my inbox that makes me go, yeah. that'll do. Do you ever write a post and then delete it? And, uh, yeah, so I have off. written posts and deleted them. But the only reason I've deleted them is because I've gone, I don't have the energy to deal with the responses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because obviously I, ha I am known for making a huge effort to reply to all of my comments yeah, I and I can't reply to all of them yeah, but, I, yeah. but I really do my best um, and there have been times where I've gone actually I can't post this because I just don't have the yeah. mental or emotional energy especially um, one of the things I talk about reasonably often is things like ADHD and, and um, mental health and I've talked openly about my own personal issues with both um, but when you have a platform and you've built trust and people feel like they know you and you talk about mental health, your inbox will explode with people who need help. Yeah. And I'm not a mental health expert. Yeah, I am yeah. not in any way trained in mental health first aid. And I don't want to be because I'm not, I'm not, I don't want it's not what you do. to. Yeah. yeah. And I've had, um, and I've talked about this on another podcast. There's a real lack of self-awareness with people. And I, I was literally talking to my boyfriend about this last night. I don't think I ever realised how little 
the majority of people are with when it comes to self-awareness. Yeah. And, you know, if I've posted that I've started taking Isotalopram for anxiety and, and depression, and then I get a barrage of stories in my inbox of people relating their suicide attempts to me and their darkest, darkest days, yeah, I'm like... Yeah. I've literally just opened up about the fact that I am struggling with my mental health right now. And I know you think you're helping me or you're helping yourself by relating this story, but actually what you're doing is trauma dumping. Yeah. And that ac exacerbates what's going on for me. Yeah. And I've had people who've literally, like I had a woman crying in my inbox telling me she was going to take her life that night. Three times I've had that from three different people. And one of them was the day before Christmas. And I was like, I was with my family and I was like, what am I going to do? She was in another country. And I'm like Googling like suicide yeah. prevention numbers and finding out police. And I was like, what am I going to do? And she messaged the next morning saying, sorry, I'd had a bit to drink. And and I'm like, I've been on the edge. Like, yeah, what yeah. if I don't reply? So I get like this anxiety with what if I don't reply to my messages? What if I miss a message from someone? So there are times when I'm like, I really want to talk about this. And then I go... No, I just, I just can't. I yeah. just don't have the emotional bandwidth to deal with what will occur following that. Um, and that's something that I don't think people, they don't realise until they're in the same situation that I'm in and they've got this platform. And, you know, I've, I've had similar with like ADHD, 100 messages from people. Where can I go to get a diagnosis? I'm like, fucking Google. <laughs> Like, why it's am I? Mad, and and they don't think, oh, maybe she's getting 200 other messages from the same thing. Maybe I shouldn't burden yeah, yeah, her yeah. with this. Um, they they just don't think about it from that angle. And I don't blame people. I'm, you know, this isn't me having a pop of people. I like that they feel that they can do that. But it it is one of the things that prevents me from posting about, about yeah, yeah. things sometimes. And I'll go, I'll write it and then go, oh, I just don't, I just can't right now. And I'll maybe save it for another time. Okay. I think that's the thing about having, especially got over 100,000 followers, mm. it only takes for a small percentage of them to be yeah. needy or to be, yeah. especially if all 100,000 of them, like I say, I'm saying, I feel like I know you. I followed your journey. I follow, yeah. If 100,000 people feel like they know you. Yeah, yeah, it can be. 0.1% of them is... Yeah, it can be quite... And you've also got the ones that like follow you because they fucking hate you. <laughs> yeah. they, and they just want to wait for you to fall. You know, it's like watching um, Olympic ice skating. You're just watching them, waiting for them to fall. Not that I sound like a psycho now admitting that. Um, but, but do you know what I mean? They're like, there are people that are waiting to see me trip up. Yeah. Um, or waiting for the opportunity to cancel me. Does that put pressure on you? Or, or do you thrive off that? Is that like a nice... No. Is that a nice pressure? Um, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Honestly, like I've had people trying to extort me. I've had death threats. It unsettled me at first. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Uh, well, I had <laughs> so a guy, a guy who was in New York during the pandemic, um, messaged me on LinkedIn, and I deleted it. Or, or I like responded. It wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't come across as, as um, unstable at that point. Yeah. Um, and then he messaged me on Facebook, but I didn't realize it was the same person. Yeah. And he started talking about some random thing. I was like, I have like no idea what you're talking about. And it wasn't like some, he was accusing me of having intercepted some of his mail or something. I'm like, I'm in the UK. Like, what What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and then he like blocked me on Facebook and I was totally respectful because I kind of was like, I don't think this person's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I got an absolute barrage of messages on Instagram of him, videos of him speaking to me like we knew each other. And he was like proper manic. Like I, I've had friends very close to me who struggle with bipolar. And he was having a severe manic episode. And he was sending me videos of like Eminem videos of a woman in the dark screaming, saying, this is going to be you. I know you live alone with your son. And then he was posting on LinkedIn. Although he blocked me, I looked from another account. He was posting pictures of guns. I'm going to shoot anyone. I'm going to blow up people that are connected to Leah. Like really, like he was posting every three minutes. It was absolute insanity. And I actually reported it to the police in the UK yeah. who escalated it because he was making terror threats. Yeah. Um, and LinkedIn escalated it. They've got an imminent threat department, which I didn't know about. Uh, so they escalated it as well because obviously he really wasn't okay. Um, and yeah, I've had someone recently trying to extort money from me, making wild allegations and having public breakdowns and tantrums about me um, and demanding that I pay him money and then it'll all go away. I'm going to go to court. I'll take you to small claims court. I'm like, with what evidence? <laughs> like, my solicitor just basically went, 
yeah. because there was there's no evidence what he's claiming is ridiculous and he just thinks that if he shouts loud enough he will intimidate me and I will pay I'm not paying anyone five thousand pounds to wow because you had a little tantrum about me it's crazy that's because I wanted to ask you what were the bad things about LinkedIn because I yeah. thought you were going to say dick pics because I I've <laughs> never had a dick pic on LinkedIn <laughs> no no I've never had one uh, no not true I've had one it looked like a thumb it was horrific. <laughs> I felt sorry for the guy. It's madness to me. So what, what's, what's amazing, so I work in office, we've got 16, 15, 16 people in, in our office, and let's say probably 10 of them are girls. And it's, we try and get trading on, on LinkedIn because it's a way they can get some leads in, yeah. and then they can get some commission, not salespeople, but they can get some commission if they get some leads in, all that kind of thing. And um, I sometimes I look at what people send them, because obviously... The minute someone gets a message in their inbox, they tell everyone that's in the office, oh, yeah. this guy's just sent me this. And I think, and then you look at the guy and go, what were you thinking would happen? Do you think someone's going to go, oh, yeah, you, you've been my, my boyfriend. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Like, what actually happens to show to everyone in the office and we all, we all have a laugh. Yeah, I did. I used to find it really difficult because I've had messages like this, like my entire life. There's a, there's a, a fetishism around women with tattoos these yeah. days. And when I first started getting tattoos, I did it to stop the attention. because so I, I was very uncomfortable with attention. I was right. like, this is a way to make myself, st um, people to avoid me. Right. And then they became very popular and very fetishized and I was covered in them and it was like, ah, it's <laughs> kind of done the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, so I have experienced it online for years, right, okay. like years, the entire, my whole life on the internet, I've yeah. had it. But on LinkedIn, I was surprised by the sheer volume because of my impression that this is a professional platform. Um, and it's just, the just weird. And, you know, I've had people ask if I'm a sex worker. I'm like, that was the first question they asked me. Like, why is this appropriate? Like, why would I? Why would all my profile be filled in with stuff that's absolutely nothing to do with that? Um, it. I show it to my boyfriend. So I've done that with boyfriends in the past, and they've taken it in the wrong way. I thought I was like trying to make them jealous. My boyfriend just thinks it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like, and he just laughs, and he'll he'll suggest things to reply to them. Um, obviously, Luke, my PA, does reply to them very sassily sometimes as well. Um, he had one guy trying it on, and he goes, uh, "You're number three hundred sixty nine in the queue." <laughs> join the queue and wait and he will get back to you when she hasn't got better things to do or something like that and his his replies just yeah. light me up there just hilarious but yeah I'm it surprises me but I know it happens to men and I'm not saying it doesn't happen to men at all the majority of doesn't it happen to me but you will <laughs> often get the men who think it's happening to them are often getting messages from fake profiles that are like yeah, honeypot yeah. profiles yeah, 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 yeah. and they will be groups of men trying to scam other men right and that happens a lot on linkedin they'll have these beautiful like eastern european model yeah, yeah, speaking yeah. women with very low cut tops everything hoisted up and it's literally obviously a very very provocatively yeah. staged profile and they'll start these conversations asking them if they're married if they'd like to meet up they try to get pictures the minute they've got pictures that's it they're messaging bosses and wives and blackmailing them and these guys don't tend to get to that stage, but they get the, are you married? Oh yeah, women are hitting on me as well. It's like, mm, you're sure it's women though? Yeah. You're sure it's actually women? I'm amazed by what people put out onto a public platform in, in, in that professional environment. I did a post before. I, I saw it on Twitter. I just stole it. <laughs> I do that. Anything funny I post, I've seen it on Twitter and stole it off someone else. <laughs> and, and it was all... I love the authenticity there. <laughs> it's what it is. Um... I did a post, it was, uh, I saw a woman crying the other day, uh, she just lost £200 in Asda, um, and she, she couldn't afford to get a taxi home. Oh. Um, luckily, I just found 200 quid outside of Asda, so I gave, <laughs> I gave her 20 quid and paid for a taxi. Hashtag blessed to be a blessing. So, uh, I, <laughs> I remember funny. that one, I saw that one. Yeah, and I got like 300 odd thousand views. Wow. And literally someone messaged me and just said, <laughs> you stole that money, I kick your balls. Wow. And he was... A chartered accountant, the director of <laughs> the director of an accountancy firm in London, proper firm. And I just thought, so I just screenshotted the thing, and that was my post for the next day. <laughs> Some then, people just can't take a joke. Yeah, I, I just I find it funnier doing those types of posts, reading the comments, and seeing the people argue. There's people who get it and the people who don't. Yeah. 
and I just I love seeing them go off at, go off against each I, other. One of my favourite things to do on LinkedIn is like throw a hand grenade into like post something that you know is going to yeah, cause yeah, yeah. controversy, and then I'm like mute notifications <laughs> and don't get any more comments. And I'm just like I let them spiral and get more and more angry. Or, you know, not the nice people, not the nice people who think my way, but you get the angry commenters. I did one, uh, like a pro pride one the other day because um, uh, my PA uh, was on a TV show and he kissed his his fiance, who is a man. And uh, there was a beautiful moment. It was shared on LinkedIn. It, it went really viral. Um, it's like 15,000 reactions, something like that. And all the haters, all the homophobes, all the God Squad turned up saying yeah. not not the you know not all religious people, but there was a lot of homophobes yeah, using yeah, yeah. religion as their justification for the hatred that they were spewing. So I wrote a post, uh, sort of in defence of it, saying you know it's disgusting. Stop using your religion to hide behind your religion isn't what fills you with hate. Your hate is what fills you with hate. Your narrow mindedness. Um, and it just completely exploded. There was loads, of, majority was support. But people forget that, they're like, oh, this doesn't belong on LinkedIn. It's nothing to do with LinkedIn. I'm like, yeah, it is, because I'm establishing my values and I'm telling you, this is where I am. Absolutely. And I, if you're a homophobe, if you're the kind of person that goes, my God is going to send you to hell for your yeah. horror, I don't want to work with you. Yeah. So actually, I'm deliberately filtering out the people I have no interest in ever working with. So I don't care if you don't like me. I like to do a really controversial post get loads of views on the profile, and then my next post is always a testimonial from a customer. Just <laughs> bring them in. And that gets way less views. We'll bring people in. Yeah. And this is what I do. <laughs> also, I when, whenever I write a testimonial as well, I try to like create something conversational yes. in the text so it will get loads of comments. Yeah. So the testimonial goes far. And that's what I did last night. Um, talk, I talked about, you know, that I wasn't going to be doing one-to-one -one coaching forever. Um, and then just sort of ask people how their Monday had gone. Was it as good as mine? And my testimony was, you know, 30,000 views on it or something. Tons of leads in my inbox. People going, oh, Jesus, she's not going to be doing this forever. Yeah, yeah. I was like, well, that's exactly what I what I wanted with it. Um, yeah, I think you can be very calculated and very um, clever. Manipulative, but in a positive way. You're getting the results that you want. But you're also creating good feeling and community and conversation. And, you know, I think I've become bit of a puppet master with with I understand my audience so well that I know how I can get the responses I want from them yeah and sometimes I don't get it right but you know it's marketing isn't it like it's all it is all marketing there's no such thing as bad PR even if someone has a pop at me and writes hateful things about me I'm like yeah but you're you're making new people aware of me that won't hate me yeah so thanks very much exactly <laughs> who was it a, a, a friend a friend a guy flicked in um <laughs> I, mean, I, I was actually a customer a guy called uh, Matt Robson he did loads on property he talks about it's cheesy as um, your vibe attracts your tribe. Yeah. And uh, it is cheap, but it's so true. It is if true. You put it's out a very cheesy way of saying it, but yeah. it is 100% true. You will bring your people. Yeah. And you'll bring... You'll bring... If I post about feminism, yeah. I attract men who are in favour of equality, who are open to talking yeah. about privilege, who are open to talking about, um, about where we're going wrong and who don't go, not all men. Yeah. And the not all men squad, they're not my people. I yeah. don't want to work with them. I want people who are open-minded and progressive and who are strong advocates for bringing women up, yeah. not putting women down, not who sit there going, but not all men are like that. It's like, why are you getting defensive? Yeah. If it's not you, I'm not talking to you. So why are you getting upset about it? Yeah. And um, so that's why I used to shy away from it more. But now I know that every time I do that, I get a flood of messages from women saying, you've made me more inspired to do this. You've made me feel stronger. I'm like, you are my people. You are the women I want to work with. Yeah. You are the women I want to help elevate your careers and to bring your voice up and to make you more confident. If that's the result of me talking about feminism and in my own self-interest, it furthers my, you know, my ability to speak on a subject I'm passionate about then I'm getting exactly the results that I want. And it might piss some people off, but I don't care. Yeah, I like it. In terms of your business journey, so we were talking obviously before we started filming. Yeah. I think all the best conversations happen before you start. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Should we repeat ourselves? <laughs> What's been, because I know, I think I spent, what did I spend with you? I spent 130 quid, I think. On did you? Your con on content prompts. Oh, yeah. Things on ideas. Yeah. Because despite... you ran out of content from Twitter. Despite... Yeah, exactly, yeah. Despite <laughs> I have a strategy for a post on it, sometimes... Sometimes, because the reason why I ask you that question, sometimes I do wake up and go, oh, God, what am I going to do? Wait, I'll put a picture yeah. of a dog on there. Um, so I, I still now, off, 
often look at that. Do you? Like, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that. Do you know, what, what was your first job? What, what's your biggest success? Who's been your worst client? All those types of things. Yeah, I like, but you can re- you can go back and look at those prompts again and come up with a different idea, yeah, yeah. which is what it was designed to do. It wasn't designed to write posts yeah. for people. It's to say, okay, this is going to ask you five questions around an idea and you'll probably get three or four posts out. Yeah, yeah. I've also stolen it. Obviously, I'm selling it now as a PDF for 75 pounds, <laughs> a bit cheaper. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> um, but in terms of your business journey, starting off selling a PDF for 100 quid, it's not, that sounds awful actually. Selling content for you know <laughs> for for a smaller amount, ninety nine pound an hour, and you're now looking at fifteen hundred quid for two hours. Yeah. What's that kind of journey been like? How do you? I'm trying to think of a better way to word that. Like, do you work with uh, business coaches? Do you have someone kind of mentoring you to kind of um, take you on that? I kind of see LinkedIn as a bit of a business coach for yeah. me because I I am. I love spending time on LinkedIn, not just from what I can give to the platform and, and financially what I can get, but yeah. how much I learn. I'm not a person who learns well by just being spoken to. And I've not joined any coaching groups or anything like that. My attention span is terrible. Yeah. And the minute someone's talking to somebody else in a coaching group, I've switched off. Yeah, me too. I'm pff, gone. So I, I don't work well in groups and I'm not a very coachable person. Yeah. So I haven't worked with, but I've got people that I have worked with who've been clients of mine, who I've sort of provided a bit of extra support. Mike's always been very good. Mike Winnett's been very good at um, giving me advice and being a sounding board when I've got an idea. My boyfriend's very, very good. Um, I speak to him a lot and he really, he's a lot more cynical than I am and he's a bit more jaded by the business world. So yeah. he, when I'm like, oh, I'm really excited, he goes, okay, let's reel this in a little yeah. bit. Let's be pragmatic about decisions um and like i'm surrounded by women you know jerry williams has been a great inspiration yeah. alice stevenson um one of my original clients alice stevenson and she's absolutely fucking epic on linkedin yeah. now and her business ab- like she is probably one of my biggest success stories because her company has just exploded and they get all of they get almost all their work from linkedin yeah. um she's amazing and there are so many examples of people that I've worked with that have done so amazing and they've wanted to then give back and support me so I've I've always got somebody to turn to if I need to have a conversation if I'm not sure about something but the majority of what I've done has been on gut instinct yeah and I've gone okay I want to make some extra money but I don't have any more time for for um coaching so where are my clients struggling and content inspiration was one of them so a year of content prompts for uninspired days boom here you go now you can refer to that back for the next few years you're never going to have to struggle for content again and i did a smaller version because some people were like i'm not quite convinced that i want to spend that much money on it so i'm going to do one for 35 quid and i've got like little um content calendars that are only a fiver each that are just quick ideas that then they go well maybe i actually want the bigger version as well Okay, all right. Okay, you can you can have it. <laughs> um, and uh, what else do I do? I've, so I've got like webinars. So I record a webinar, sell tickets for it, and then sell the recording afterwards. Yeah. And that goes part of my value stack for my digital course as well. I noticed that you know my prices were going up with the coaching. So I was like, okay, but I'm now pricing out a lot of small businesses. And for yeah, me, yeah. that wasn't. I was like, no. I won't put my prices up until my digital course is ready because I don't want to put a barrier between learning this valuable stuff that will help those small businesses. And that price was just too much for a lot of them, especially during the the pandemic. So, you know, my digital course is only 250 quid and they get tons and they get extra stuff involved with it because I didn't want to price people out. So I've always... While I know that my own income is getting higher and higher and I'm charging more for my one-to-one coaching, you can still do the group coaching for 500 quid. Um, You can still get the digital course for 250 quid. You can still get the resources. I've got free stuff as well. And when I start my membership group, which is coming soon, that's only going to be 50 pounds a month. That is affordable for every single business. It's a business expense. Everybody can afford it. They'll get two masterclasses a month. And it's like, I I could do it for a lot higher, but I don't want to. Yeah. Because for me, I, I'm making more than enough money that I that I need yeah. to live happily, to be happy, and my boyfriend will kill me. But I, being a millionaire was never part of the plan. I, that's not what I'm doing it for. I want to be able to be happy and comfortable and love what I do. And if the bonus of that is earning well, then you know Shit. that that's great. Um. What would you do if LinkedIn changed? What would you do if, when you build something off one one kind of platform? If LinkedIn I mean, it changed, is always changing. 
it's always changing. So I'm constantly having to update. The algorithm does change. Yeah. You know, they're bringing in new features all the time. Um, audio rooms are coming. I'm a beta test for that. Um, so they've got like a clubhouse type feature. Uh, they're bringing in lots of new features for creators now and making LinkedIn, uh, you know, it's grown so much and they've yeah. got a whole creator team. They've got creator managers for the bigger creators as well. Um, they're really pushing the kind of creative side of LinkedIn and they want a younger vibe. They're really pushing towards a younger market. So now. you think if anything, it's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. It's only going to give more of a voice. Yeah. To and I think what you'll find is the more they work, the more they push the direction towards creative people and being creative and creating valuable content that is like entertaining they're, they're bringing in short form video more short form video does really well on linkedin when you're creating stuff that's like edutainment very similar to tiktok and reels yeah. right they're keeping up with the other the other platforms so i think the people that are going to suffer is the creators who aren't creative yeah the creatives creators who are constantly rehashing old content spewing out um you know inspirational quotes all yeah. the time that aren't their own originals uh who are just posting random youtube videos that they've they've nicked and then they get all the i think the really creative people that's what that's the future of linkedin the people yeah. who are naturally creative and are there to add value to the community they're going to thrive so i'm not worried about my position because i know i'm doing i'm doing all the stuff that linkedin wants from yeah, creators yeah, yeah. but i've already been doing it for years and i know that that they look at what i do i know that the the creator team on linkedin look at what i yeah. do um you know i've had direct feedback from ryan roslansky about my content yeah so oh. i'm i'm aware that they know what i'm doing and they see the effect it has as well as many other creators and that's the that's the goal they they want linkedin to be this powerful professional community not um an ego competition. Yeah. I need to stop rehashing all the content then. <laughs> I mean, I think you're doing quite well, so I don't think right. it's too much of a problem. <laughs> so if I can't even in the post, I'll go back nine months. Take yeah, something. there you go. I've got new followers in the last nine months. Exactly, they they're it. not going to know. I think. Um, got what, short memories. Yeah, exactly. What do you do for fun? Outside of work, outside oh my of... God. Um, I don't really get that much time for my own fun because I have a six-year-old. Yeah. So um, travelling. So traveling is my biggest thing okay. and we haven't really, we went to Lapland in December. We did a did day you? trip to Lapland, which was incredible. Amazing. Uh, so much fun, like proper adventure, but we're going to Bali in the summer holidays. Nice. So I'm going to go and spend three weeks in Bali in a, because I can still take my laptop. Yeah, exactly. You can still work. We're seven hours ahead over there. So I got to like three or four o'clock in the afternoon before everyone wakes up, which is perfect because I can Wicked. enjoy the day. Um, so yeah, that's my biggest passion, like just to get away from real life. And we go on lots of country walks with my dogs. Um, we went to Laser Quest last week. Turns out I'm quite good at Laser Quest. Yeah? Yeah, me and my son were like quite a team. Um, but I, I, I mean, go out for dinner, drinks, socialise. I've got a LinkedIn party next in June. Would you? Yeah, are you not coming? Do you I, know I, about I, this? I haven't been invited. Tell we, us all about well, it. I've been posting about it. I did a Christmas party in December. Okay. Um, and we had like just over a hundred people from LinkedIn came along and it was a ticketed event. We donated yeah, yeah. the proceeds to charity, food and drink was included in all of that. And it was the best atmosphere I've ever seen. Like it was just amazing. Everyone was a really good vibe and lots of people didn't know anyone, but they came anyway because there was yeah, like yeah. familiar faces and there were so many business deals done off the back of it. Loads of people like working with each other, but it was just fun. Like Dan everyone in was Manchester dancing. Or London? We did that one in London, but this one that we're doing in June is in Manchester on the 10th of June. And it's like £85 for a ticket, or we drinks, we food, nice venue, plus a charity donation included in that. And yeah, it's gonna be really good. It's just a good group of people that wanna have a good time and meet new people and and meet some of their connections face to face. Sweet. So Lovely. yeah. Anything you want to plug, anything you want to specifically talk about? Um, no, not really, because no. I'm fully booked. Check it out. I mean, buy my digital course because that I'm. You can book that, and I'm not fully booked. But no, not really. I'm fully booked pretty much for the rest of the summer now. So I'm like, yeah, don't really need to plug too much. We'll include uh, a link to your LinkedIn in the yeah. description and all that kind of thing. So people yeah, you can see, you. see me if getting not already. See me being goofy on Instagram and trying desperately to raise my profile on there. Cool. Well, last <laughs> question. This podcast. What's it all about? Um, business journeys. I think it's been, and the 
benefits of LinkedIn really more than anything, hasn't it? Like from two points of view of people doing LinkedIn from a personal angle and how amazingly impactful that can actually be on your business if you allow it, it's life-changing. So I think that's probably been the overarching theme, isn't it? Amazing. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure.